Hey everyone, this is Kai Werner from Confluent. Today I want to talk about a specific topic for the rise of data in motion in industrial IoT and manufacturing 4.0. I will explore how you can do condition monitoring and predictive maintenance in real time with stream processing. That's an exciting topic and I see the adoption of Apache Kafka and its ecosystem more and more in this space. First of all, obviously, real-time data beats slow data everywhere. And all the areas around industrial IO2 is where this is true too. And in manufacturing, if you think about the shop floor level, predictive maintenance and quality assurance and condition monitoring are a key piece of that. So what we talk about here actually is not hard real-time. So it's not about the robotics, it's not about embedded systems, but it's about connecting to the shop floor data, which is running in hard real time, taking the data and using it in what in industrial IoT we call the near real time, where we process different sensor data in milliseconds. We aggregate it, we use it, and we send alerts out of that to a display or to a mobile app from a human. But as you can see here, it's really also then cross-functional because you can also then use the sensor data and combine it with information from other systems like the ERP or MES systems, or even build advanced use cases on top of that. So even if you build a solution for predictive maintenance, you can combine this data then with other information systems in the cloud or in other areas. And that's really the key piece why we see the adoption of Kafka so much in, in this area. So as you see in this um, McKinsey report on the right side, um, in industrial IoT, so much more investment is going into the software and the services because that's where the margins are. So the manufacturers in the meantime understood that um, selling machines and machinery is good, but um, actually the software on top of it is where you can make the real money and also where you can improve the customer experience and create new business models. And that's why we see so many manufacturers building services like condition monitoring and predictive maintenance on top when you sell machinery. But on the other side, of course, it's for the end user. So if you want to build that service by yourself, for example, in your cloud infrastructure, then you can also do that by yourself, as you will see today. So for the beginning, just on one slide to clarify what event streaming and Apache Kafka actually is. So when I talk about data in motion, I mean that we continuously process and correlate data end to end. So this is actually what Kafka is built for. Many people still think about it as a messaging or ingestion layer into data lakes. That's of course what it can do, but it's only part of the use cases. Maybe 5% of the use cases are ingestion into a data warehouse or data lake. But you can do so much more with Kafka. And I have talked about this in other um, sessions already, right? But on high level, the point is Kafka is a combination of a large scale messaging system for processing millions of events per second, reliably with fault tolerant in mind. But also you provide the storage capabilities to truly decouple producers and consumers from each other. And this is super important because your sensors, where you build predictive maintenance on, well, they continuously produce high volumes of data. And on the other side, one consumer might be your MES or ERP system. That's typically not built for that volume of data. And it's not interested in the raw data. It only wants to consume the correlated data. So you have very different systems with different data approaches. And Kafka handles the back pressure and aggregating the data. And with the storage in it, you also decouple them 100% from each other. That's very different from a message queue or from a um, web service where you are much more tightly coupled to each other. In addition to the foundation of this extreme scale messaging and storage, you have also the connectivity to these other systems with Kafka Connect and its connectors, both for the IoT world, where you connect, for example, to MQTT or um, to Syslog or to files on Windows servers. And on the other side, you can connect to modern applications, maybe even in the cloud, like um, your ERP system, your MES system, but also your data lake and data warehouse and custom applications you build. And last but not least, and that's the main topic of today, is the stream processing capability of Kafka. So one thing is to build pipelines from A to B and maybe process it before, but the 
Real added value often comes when you also take data from one or more interfaces and correlate it in real time in a stateless or stateful manner. And that's also what you can do with the Kafka ecosystem. And that's where I will show an example today. So Kafka is much more than messaging. You can use it to build end-to-end -end pipelines and process the data. And the other good news is that you can do that everywhere. So here is a high level example. And I know there's a lot of things on here, but the point is really just in short that you can run event streaming powered by Kafka everywhere. And the huge benefit of that is that you have one technology, one API, one operations concept, and then you can roll it out everywhere at different scale. Ideally, and, and that's what most of our customers do, you go cloud first with workloads where that makes sense, as you can see here on the top right. The huge benefit is there, you can use a serverless offering like Confluent Cloud with consumption-based pricing and mission-critical SLAs. And with that, you can get data from other cloud services, but also from the edge, from IoT, and then use the data and build your applications or connect to other cloud services with that. And it's fully managed, you can focus on the business problems. In the real world today, however, most of our customers have a hybrid scenario in, in industrial IoT because they have their own data centers. That's what you see on the bottom right, where you see where customers are connecting to their Oracle databases, to SAP systems, and so on in their data center. And then they either process the data in that data center with the Kafka ecosystem, or they replicate the data from Kafka into the cloud in a unidirectional or bidirectional way. The huge advantage of this is you don't just use Kafka for the data integration and processing, but even for the data replication and synchronization between different locations or regions or data centers. And it's all using the Kafka protocol with cluster linking. This means it's really super easy to connect different Kafka clusters, no matter if they run in one or more clouds, if they run in a data center, or if they run much further to the edge. And that's the last part of this picture on the left side. So, especially in industrial IoT, sometimes you need to process the data where it's created. This can be a ship, or this can be something very small like a drone, a machine, right, where you process data on. And once again, the big advantage of using Kafka here is that you have the same API, the same technology on the right side, where it's at a bigger scale and often with different SLAs. And you have it on the left side where it's sometimes even completely disconnected from the internet for security reasons, where you have an air-gapped environment. And with that, you can now deploy Kafka either on a ship in a mission-critical way with three brokers, or you can embed a single broker, for example, into a drone. To, and, and the huge advantage here is, however, you have Kafka on the drone to do data collection from the sensors, to do true decoupling and storage and back pressure handling with the Kafka storage, and then when you're flying back to where you have online connectivity, then you replicate the data from the drone back into the cloud, for example. Or, but typically you already pre-process it on the drone that you only replicate the relevant data. So keeping data where it's created is relevant in industrial IoT for cost efficiency, because it's so high volumes and you don't need all of the raw data in the cloud. It's often used for low latency when, you, when the um, round way to the cloud and back is simply too expensive in terms of milliseconds. Or in other ways, it's really about cybersecurity and error gapped environments, why you want to keep the data at the edge. So here you see in industrial IoT, there's many places where you can deploy Kafka. And now for condition monitoring and predictive maintenance, it depends, right? Sometimes if you have a good cloud connectivity, you can build your service in the cloud for that. In some other cases, you directly connect to the shop floor with very low latency so that you deploy the, the small computer or machine next to the production line. And that's up to you and your requirements and use cases. I want to sh few, show you a few examples next. So this is Mercury Systems. And they talked at a, a past Kafka summit about how they build a digital twin and digital thread for their ecosystem. <clears throat> and as you can see, so um, they are not just getting data from the IoT systems where you get the sensor data from, but really also connect the data with their PLM, their ERP, their MES system. All of that in a cloud native and elastic way, 
where you can connect different technologies and communication paradigms. Not everything is real time. You still have legacy systems that are maybe producing files on a Windows server and you need to connect to that via the, the C++ or .NET client for Kafka. Or maybe even just a REST proxy from some systems. But all of the data gets into event streaming and then you can correlate data and connect to other systems. And what we see for, uh, across customers is really that um, one of the huge benefits is not just the, the open architecture, but also the faster time to market where you can build a pipeline once and then attach new systems that consume parts of the data. And because Kafka was built for scale from the beginning from the cloud tech giants, it's also built for scale for IoT. No matter how small you start, you can scale it up without changing the architecture. Devon Energy is another great example. So here the key point to show is that this is a hybrid architecture where Kafka is even deployed at the edge outside a data center. The small left box, as you see on the left side, that's one of our hardware partners. So this comes pre-configured with Confluent installed so that you can do connected or disconnected edge computing with the Kafka ecosystem, for example, in the oil and gas field. And there you can either just do aggregations and pre-processing so that you only send replic uh, relevant data to the cloud, to another Kafka cluster, or you really do critical applications at the edge in real time with Kafka. For example, condition monitoring. And then you only send an alert to the cloud or to another system. You're very flexible about how to architect this um, solution depending on your needs. And the last example, and this is now also where I want to show you a concrete example, is Severstal. Severstal is a, um, a steel manufacturing company in Russia, and they are running Kafka close to the shop floor for years now. So I, I've been in Moscow meeting them, I think it was four years ago in 2018 or so, when they already leveraged Kafka streams together with machine learning technologies like H2O to embed AI into the edge computing with Kafka. And so they do that to have predictive maintenance and quality assurance, connecting to all the sensor data at the shop floor level, correlating it and applying the business logic to reducing the cost and risk of their production line and improving the OEE with that. So after a few examples from the real world, let's now take a look at how this looks like with Kafka. Here now on the right side, you see a few different sensors. So this is machines or PLCs producing sensor events continuously. It doesn't matter how it gets into Kafka. It can be with an, another framework like Apache PLC4X to directly get data from Modbus or Siemens or Allen Bradley. It can be a Kafka connector for MQTT or OPCOA, or it can be a third party industrial IoT platform like I don't know, OCSoft, Siemens MindSphere, whatever you um, have in the middle for the last mile integration. But then you get the data into Kafka and this Kafka can be deployed everywhere, as we discussed, connected directly at the shop floor level, or maybe you replicate it to the cloud. That's another discussion, not for this video. It doesn't matter for the use case. And now when we get the data into Kafka, we can implement different use cases. A first use case is stateless condition monitoring. So this is a, a little bit more a simple, but still very powerful example. So in this case, we're using Kafka Streams. That's a Java library, where you leverage the Kafka ecosystem to continuously process the data. And as you can see here on the left side in this small code example, what we are doing here, we're connecting to the sensor data, and then we are only filtering out all the events where a specific attribute. In this case, the temperature, is over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we send it to another Kafka topic where a specific consumer showing this in a dashboard or sending an alert can use it in real time. In this case, it's stateless. So this means every event is processed by itself. But this is already sufficient for, I guess, 60, 70% of the use cases where you can implement cost efficient infrastructures, get all their raw data in, but only use the relevant data you're interested in to forward it. And so this is, for example, to detect temperature spikes in a system relatively easily or for um, getting all the raw data and doing first aggregations of the data. Now, on the other side, if we talk about 
more advanced condition monitoring or then really true predictive maintenance, we typically need to build more advanced applications. And this means that we typically need to correlate and aggregate more than one event and apply it to each other to see and for insights out of that. This can be events from just one interface, like from one machine, or you can correlate data from different machines or sensors and different technologies. And you cannot even just use IoT sensor data for that, but maybe correlate the high volume sensor data with the low volume data from your EMS or ERP system and take action depending on the correlated insights you find. In this case, on the bottom right, you see a code example from KSQL DB. And now we build a stateful application. This means it's about correlating different events together from one or more data sources. In this case, we count the total spike of the temperature in a tumbling window over one hour. So this means, in contrary to a batch process, this continuously monitors the last 60 minutes and it goes on, right? And you can do this for 60 minutes or for 60 seconds or for two days, depending on your use case. And when within, in this case, these 60 minutes, you have a higher number than the count you define for a total spikes. Let's say if you have more than 100 spikes within one hour of a flowing window, then you send an alert to the operations team. And with this, you can build much more powerful applications. And it's not just about one single event, but a correlation of different events. And this is super powerful. And with these kind of sliding windows, you can implement real-time applications continuously processing the data in motion. And with that, you can build much more powerful and reactive systems than using a data lake where you ingest everything, maybe even in real time with Kafka, but then you only run a batch process against it every hour or something like that. Here, it's really real time with the data in motion while it's happening and while it's interesting. And then you can build anything with that. Like here is now a more advanced example where we embed an analytic model trained with TensorFlow. So this means we leverage machine learning and AI and embed it into the Kafka application. So instead of using business logic where we write the code to for condition monitoring or quality assurance or predictive maintenance, in this case now the data science team has trained an analytic model and this model is now embedded into the Kafka application inside a user-defined function, as you see in this code example with KSQL. So here we directly apply the model in real time to every single sensor. So this is really also built for scale to process thousands or even millions of events per second and applying the model. And in this case, to detect anomalies. And these anomalies can then predict if there is a maintenance issue and if we should send the operations team to fix the issue before the machine breaks, not after it breaks. And so this is just to show you one more example how powerful this is. In real time, at scale, reliably, for the integration with the shop floor. Yeah, and in summary, therefore, um, it doesn't matter if you build more simple state-less applications or powerful stateful applications. It doesn't matter where the data is coming from and what data you need to correlate. And it doesn't matter what programming languages you want to use, like Java code or maybe more SQL code. You can deploy all of that anywhere. This can be close to the shop floor level, like at Sevastal. Or another example where this is deployed directly to the cloud is BMW. They connect to all their global plants, but they directly connect the machines and PLCs from the shop floor and production lines to the cloud in Microsoft Azure in their case, where they have a direct connection with a stable and um, fast network. So you're very flexible about how to architect this. Yeah, and uh, based on that, then um, it really doesn't matter um, how you start with that. Um, some customers start with the cloud first approach and do everything in the cloud what's possible, connecting to your CRM system or maybe to the next generation of your MES, which is also running in the cloud. But then also build other services on top of that, like a real-time locating system for asset tracking, or you connect to the advanced planning and scheduling system, whatever you need to do, right, with the data. You can tap in new consumers to the data and combine it with your existing data. And some of the data might come from the smart factory or from other edges, like um, a truck fleet where you connect to. And some of these trucks might also deploy a Kafka cluster or at least a small single broker to do edge computing with the same technology and API. 
But then also use the Kafka API with cluster linking to replicate the data from the truck into the cloud where you correlate it with other information. So condition monitoring and predictive maintenance is typically just part of the overall story around event streaming and processing data in motion. But this is where you can see and add the huge benefits and added value of using Kafka for your ecosystem. Yeah, and this is actually why Confluent comes into play here very often. So um, we are in the end only doing event streaming with Apache Kafka. We are still doing over 80% of the commits to the open source framework. I mean, it's obvious because Confluent was founded by the inventors of Kafka seven or eight years ago. And Kafka is still the only thing we do in the end. But the problem with Kafka is it's an open source framework. That's great. You can use it by yourself and start with that. But it's just a car engine. So you have to build the product around that. So with Confluent, we provide you the complete car. So this is a Kafka, which is already secure, which is providing the tooling for operations and monitoring. This is the mission critical SLAs. And this is the complete product, including all the connectivity to the IoT interfaces, but also, for example, to the cloud and data lakes and data warehouse. And it's providing data governance and many more security features for encryption and whatnot. So this is the complete car you can get. And if you're in the cloud, then you're even more lucky because then you get the self-driving car level five with Confluent Cloud on all major clouds. So no matter if you're running Europe in the US or in China, you get a fully managed service. And with that, then you can use not just Kafka as a messaging layer, but the whole platform, including integration and data processing as a fully managed service so that you can focus on the business logic. So this is how also um, Confluent fits into the space with Apache Kafka. And with that, I hope this was a good overview about the industrial IoT space with event streaming and specifically the example with condition monitoring and predictive maintenance for stateless and stateful stream processing and streaming analytics with the Kafka ecosystem. I hope you liked that. So please also let me know and share your feedback and also enjoy my other videos or connect to me on LinkedIn and Twitter to stay in touch. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.